Well, hello, uh, Ed Claxton again here. Uh, we just explained about uh, blue on binding and purfling on the back of this guitar. And this is a uh, actually a sort of a new model for me. It's being made for a <clears throat> customer of mine up in, I think he's in Seattle. And he has one of my other larger uh, steel string models. And he wanted something that was uh, smaller body and thinner. And uh, consequently, getting a little different tonality than the, the guitar that he currently has. Uh, so I drew up this new shape. Uh, you draw it on uh, three-dimensional, uh, two-dimensional on paper. So anyway, in, for, in order to uh, take that 2D image off the paper and see it 3D, as the back curvature has just like the guitar will look, and uh, you can get an idea if you really like the shape or if you want to tweak it a little bit. And these things are pretty quick and easy to make. And uh, it's just a good aid for me to, to see the, the lines and the curves and the proportions from any angle. How'd you, how'd you cut that? I cut out the sides on just on my bandsaw and kind of sand them smooth and, uh, you know, uh, really easy to do, you know. <laughs> so this is the first model? Yeah, I made guitars similar to this back in the 70s, but I uh, this is kind of more of an OM-style Martin guitar in the, uh, proportions and the body depth and the dimensions across the bouts. Uh, and it'll have a 14-fret neck on it, 14 frets to the body. Uh, and uh, the hardest part is finding a good quality case that fits your guitars these days. <laughs> And that's kind of what I'm working on now. And this guitar will be finished, will be built probably in another, oh, two weeks or so, three weeks, depending on, you know, what happens every day. And then it'll go into the finishing process. That'll take about a month. I give it a good uh, three weeks. And the sides and back will have a nitrocellulose lacquer. And uh, the top will be French polish with shellac, which is... Uh, Almost all the guitars I make these days have a French polish top instead of a lacquer top. It's very thin, very uh, helpful to uh, pulling the tone out of the guitar. Why don't we talk about the materials? Oh, sure, yeah. This, uh, I'm really lucky I have a lot of really nice old tone woods that I've been collecting for years. And this particular top, I don't know if you can see that silky green pattern in there or not. This is a piece of Italian spruce from the uh, Dolomite region, uh, and it's this particular wood is noted because the uh, the soil that it grows in has a lot of uh, calcium content, and so I guess you know it affects the tone one way or the other. I'm not really scientific about it, but every guitar I've made with this batch of wood sounds great. This is my real sim simplest rosette that I make, uh, and my customer like it. just likes very uh, understated look. You know, and this uh, this is Brazilian rosewood back in size, and this is uh, a pretty special set of wood. It's uh, uh, very tight grain, perfectly quarter sawn, beautiful color and nice figure, and it's a flitch sawn set, meaning uh, the sides were cut off the same billet of wood as the back was. And uh, so you get this perfect continuity of grain and color on both sides of the guitar. It really adds to the, to the beauty of the guitar. Uh, now, as I've opposed to not matching. The mm -hmm. back and sides don't match. <laughs> Where um, where'd you get this wood? This wood I have, uh, in, in the years past, a couple of uh, dealers that deal with Brazilian rosewood, and one's actually a Brazilian, and I, he's the man I got this, these sets out of, and I bought, I think, six sets of the same, the same flitch. Uh, the other guitar I'm making now, uh, this, this guy, a customer, came in the shop and picked out his wood, because I just show him all the wood, and he could select what he wants. You can see it's the same. It's like another set or two from, you know, 
but it's identical wood. It's very, it, it's, it's dense and very hard, very dry, and just great, great stone wood. Uh, so anyway, and the, the guitar on this, this one, uh, the gentleman lives out of state, couldn't come and select his own wood, so I just send, I have all my rosewood on the computer, and it's easy to just send photos and several sets, different looks, and they can select uh, uh, what appeals to them, at least visually. And then they trust me on making sure it's a good piece of tone wood, which it always is, so that's never a problem. What are you going to do when that's uh, all gone? I'm, uh, I'm going to retire before it's all gone. I've got a stash of it. <laughs> I sure you do. So you're in good shape. Yeah, we'll go look. I've got that. enough uh, uh, wood. Yeah, I don't look for wood anymore. If something spectacular walks in here, then I would, I would buy it. But I don't. You know, I've got more wood than I can make guitars with. <laughs> <laughs> Want to buy some? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that's a, a a good good position. Yeah, there it is. Like my 401k plan. You know. <laughs> 